this is Magnar and welcome back to episode 11 in my modding tutorial series for Rome 2 Total War. In this episode I'm going to be going a bit more in depth into a number of different things within variant mesh definitions um, and what they mean and how you can use them. Uh, specifically I'm going to be talking about masks, imposter models, probability and attach points. So to start off, let's talk about masks. Masks are linked directly to the DB tables in the pack. So if we open up data underscore Rome 2 from the uh, data folder from your Rome 2, and you go down to this table here, which is data DB faction uniform colors. And this is where it's set which color goes to each faction's units by default. And you can see at the top here, using PFM. Uh, there are three sets of RGB colors, red, green, blue is RGB. Um, so you've got primary, secondary and a tertiary RGB color. And this, these mixed together gives you, the, say, for instance, the different patterns on um, the Gaul tunics, for instance, how they're checked with different, ca different patterns. Uh, th those colors are determined by these RGB sets. Other things like the different variation of shield colors uh, in, that you can get for units when you assign a shield um, and different units will have different color shields. It's determined by the RGB colors. So that can be done, that is done on a faction level, but it can also be done on a unit by unit level, which is in unit to unit. Uh, Unit variant color tables, here it is. Unit variance colors. And in this one, you can set specific units, uh, a specific, their own specific set of RGB colors. So for instance, you can make the Praetorian Guard all purple. All right? Or you can make a, a one unit Carthage Sacred Band all white, for instance. Depend or you can just change it, depending on how you want to have it. Um, you can also here, put in a specific faction. So if one unit is shared by multiple factions and you want one faction to have a unique color to everyone else, then you can put in the faction key here. Um, also you can set the soldier colors different to the officer colors. So here you put soldier type, you put soldier, or you can put officer. I think there's a couple of other ones you can put in there as well. Um, so this will read into, be read by, so we don't need that anymore, now you can see this is where the colors, when you're using this table here, be careful though, it's not RGB, it's BGR, this one, this table here has it backwards for some reason, in PFM at least, just be careful of that, otherwise your colors will look a little bit different to what you expected, so I don't need that open, so what I'm going to show you now is how the model which how to, how to know which colors are going to be used for which model um, or how it's assigned to which areas of a model so some parts of a tunic will have some parts um, of different colors and some parts will just be plain and not have faction specific colors like armors and stuff like that so I'm going to show you how to do it, where that's all shown and that's all done let's go into for instance shield and that's done here in the mask, Britain Oval Shield mask. So if we open that up using GIMP oh that's blank. However here you can see in the if you go to the channels you can see that there are some markings there. Now you want to see what they are. You don't. You don't save this edit. What I'm going to show you now, but this is how you can actually see what the different ones are. So you go to the, unselect all of them except for the alpha. We'll go into here and we'll just paint it black. Right, clicking into the layer, and then we can enable these again, and that will be assigned uh, applied over the shield, and this only has two different colors of those three that are in the database table. Uh, another example, probably better with three colors, is this one here. Maybe. Okay, 
Okay, so this one here has all different colors available. And it's all over the same area, meaning that um, it'll pick one of the different colors. So blue, green, or red, and it'll mix them up between the units. Whereas this one here doesn't didn't have anything in the alpha, which means that um, yeah, it'll be split between this. Okay, so the next part of the mask is that you assign it in the variant mesh. So I've got here the Roman musculata variant mesh definition, which you can also find. Uh, man, armor. From where we ex vanilla extracted, and we go to man armor Roman musc musculata here. I've already opened it to save a bit of time. And if we look here, we can see the tunic is the same for all three sets of this is a, this is one set of variant mesh uh, model between the opening variant mesh bracket and the closing statement here. Everything in between will be consist of one model, so that includes the, the cuirass, um, the imposter model, which I'll get to later, and also here you can see masks. Now the default for the masks, I've written up here, is that mask 0 equals 0, mask 1 equals 1, mask 2 equals 2. And what this statement at the end of this line here does, which is always in the variant mesh or variant model, a uh, variant mesh model line, you'll see the mask, not in the slot um, line. So this re reorganizes it, this changes it. So now mask zero equals two and mask two equals zero. So this switches the two colors around. So while default they are mask zero equals zero and mask two equals two, they will now with this statement here for this um, instance for this when, whenever this variant mesh is applied to a unit this specific cuirass set um, which consists of the varying between these two types of cuirass models with the tunic underneath that's what this means um, when this one is picked added to a unit which will be one third of the time because there's three here and this is so it takes one third of the time. It will apply. It will change up the colors um, in the mask that we saw before. In this that we used, opened in GIMP, we saw the different colors uh, in the different channels, and this switches those around. It says, "Okay, we want to have variety between the uh, the way our colors are mixed." The other two lines here you see are both exactly the same, and the reason for that is that they want is that this changes the uh, probability of this type of model appearing. So having two of these and one of these with a changed color scheme means that the default color scheme will occur twice as often as the varied color scheme here. So you can do that with your own uh, variant measures as well, and you say, okay, I want to have this one appear only temp uh, say 20% of the time, and I want another model or another variant mesh to appear 80% uh, of the time. Then you put four rows of the one that you want to apply uh, to happen 80%, and you put four, uh, one time the one you want to apply only 20% of the time. So you can change the uh, how much and how often uh, different models and model sets of variant meshes uh, are displayed on your unit or within, for example, within an armor variant mesh definition. Yeah, so that's mask, that's how they worked, how they work. So you can change that, you can make, as long as the mask is actually used by that uh, texture, um, you can use any variations. You can make it mask zero equals uh, one, mask two equals 
zero mask one equals zero as an example um, you can also just change one color you can just have that all right and then mask one will equal one and mask zero will equal one now as we saw when we looked at the textures not all textures have all three masks some only have two masks or one mask so it, it's dependent on that as to which masks um, you can switch around so you can play around with that and have a bit of fun and see what you can come up with next thing is imposter models so if you look here each line has an imposter model here and it links you see all the tunics linked to the same model and while the variant mesh model refers to two different models here the same two different models in the imposter model every single line refers to the exact same model B B B B B here A B A B A B the reason for that is this is used when you zoomed really far out and you can't really tell the detail anymore of the armor to, to improve performance it just uses one model because you're not going to notice the difference anyway so if you're going to create your own variant mesh for an armor or for whatever it is um, try to best practice use the variant um, the imposter models that uh, are already used by CA or make sure that you use pretty much all the same imposter models or a very small number of different imposter models just for import and performance uh, aspect especially with very large battles now another thing uh, the last two points I want to talk about is probability and attach points now I touched on both of these uh, in previous episodes when I went over the unit the variant mesh definition which is this one here we're going to uh, work with this is the one for the chute which we created in earlier episodes now attach points basically always go to weapons or shields and that but they don't necessarily have to what this determines is which part of the the skeleton the model of the man um, the weapon will appear on I mean you could you could theoretically put an armor onto attach point weapon one and some guy will have some armor uh, in his hand or near his hand it'll look a bit odd so uh, basically we just use it for weapons um, and shields so here even though you, the weapon one even though shields is in its own category here what's the real important part is the attach point and that is weapon three attach points are also used for helmets with crests on the helmets so if we open up a helmet One one with crests. Okay, this one's gonna have crests on it. Okay, attach point crest center. There are pretty much three uh, crest positions for helmets, which is crest underscore center, crest underscore le left, and crest underscore right. Which of those you can actually use for a given helmet is actually determined by the helmet model. If you try to apply crest center for a model which doesn't have a place for the cre uh, that attach point on the model, then nothing will happen. The the if you add a feather or a crest or whatever it is, it will not appear on the model and it'll just be normal. Um, so you have to actually know which models actually have positions for crests. Crest being uh, feathers or the horsehair plumes or the centurion um, thing me pressed <laughs> um, yeah, so that's that's a touch point so there, there's both within the unit itself there's the for weapons and shields and then there's for helmets they they also have attach points for hair feathers and plumes etc uh, lastly I want to talk about probability probability is something you apply you add in this slot line um, and what it essentially what it does is it says that probability there's a probability of this that anything in this slot will be added to the unit 
You can do that, for instance, with beards. So let's make a beard. So we'll get rid of the closing bracket because we can actually use it now. And then we can just copy this just to get the basic format for the the variant mesh definition, reference definition line. And then we'll just change it from man skin to whatever it's called. Let's have a look. Man hair beards. Okay. Um, we can change that to, to hair beards. And then just pick one. So Select the name, paste over it. Okay. So now we want to add a pro probability to this. So not, not every single unit will have this beard. You know, or whatever um, beards are in that variant mesh definition, but only 10% will have beards now. And we have to close this, of course. So we close bracket slot. Okay, so if we do this now, only 10% of the units will use this. The rest, there'll just be nothing there, which means it'll be whatever's in the game skin. You can do the same for helmets, and but if you do it with helmets, be aware that anything you don't doesn't that doesn't get a helmet will actually be bald or with very little hair because that's it'll be determined by whatever amount of hair will be in the game skin. Um, so if you want to have some guys with helmets, some guys with hair, then instead of having everything from the helmets, you could actually add some models from hair beards and pick the, the hair model, the hair variant mesh definitions and actually put them in here. Not everything has to relate, uh, go to this helmets folder just because it's in the helmets or lollipops as I've called it um, slot. Yeah, so that's probability. You can play around with that to um, get different effects. Um, yeah. If you have any questions or you want to know if you find anything else in the variant mesh definitions you're not quite sure about or want further explaining, uh, just pop a question in the comments or on my um, the thread I put on Total War Center. All right. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.